reactions after the symposium now that you've heard what the uh, the EPA had to say? Well, thanks for having me on, Rob. And, and let me just say, uh, it was the Public Service Commission that put on the symposium. Yeah, I'm we sorry, kind of had to I drag knew that. The EPA up here. They didn't come to North Dakota uh, for their own hearing. But uh, you know, a couple of major takeaways from from the day. Um, one very positive and, and one very negative. Uh, North Dakota and, and our, our world, th- there's a lot of room for optimism. Uh, our oil and gas that we have up in the Bakken and, and the geology of, of western North Dakota uh, lends itself so well to uh, enhanced oil recovery with CO2. Um, there was just a, a great sense of optimism that in you know years down the road, uh, the world can have a much brighter future where billions more people have, have the advantages of, of access to energy. But, uh, and, and North Dakota can be a powerhouse in that, but for now we are threatening the whole system with these new EPA regulations because they are requiring the carbon capture uh, techniques that do not exist yet. There's a lot of optimism that in five, ten years we're going to be there. But if they're going to require it at this point, we are going to see thousands of megawatts of, of coal-fired power get shut down in this country and, and never get to that point. So it, it's, it's uh, delightful to see so much room for, for a brighter future and yet frustrating to see the EPA potentially stifling it. Let me make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that the EPA wants to require carbon capture, wants to put in place carbon capture rules that you're saying, if they're enforced now, are going to be impossible to comply with because the technology doesn't exist yet, but it is good technology that might exist 10 years from now that would be very, very good for North Dakota. Is that an accurate summary? That, that is an accurate summary, and, and the EPA is uh, citing in their rule, they've already uh, issued a, a rule that, that they're taking comment on now that would be enforceable against any new coal-fired power plants that would get built. They're planning on issuing another rule this summer on the existing plants, so we really don't know the details of that yet. But in their uh, discussions to this point, they cite as existing proven technology um, some plants that are under construction. And to me, something being under construction uh, has not proven that it's effective. It's not proven that it's going to be reliable. But there is one thing that they are sure of. It's going to be much more expensive. Why are, why are they in such a hurry to implement these? I mean, it seems like... It seems like, you know, from, from what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from what, you know, groups like the Lignite Energy Council is putting out, uh, what I'm hearing from you as a, as a regulator is that there's nothing necessarily wrong with this technology, that this is someplace the industry should go. You're just opposed to the timing on it. So why is the EPA, and I guess I'm asking you to speak for the EPA, which you probably can't. Why is there such a push on this, though? I mean, why now? Why can't we be patient and wait 10 years when this is, this is feasible? You know, I, I certainly can't speak for the EPA. Uh, don't intend to try to. But all I will do is tell you what I can read between the lines in, in what they're doing. Um, and... I want to emphasize to your listeners, Rob, uh, they have even acknowledged that these changes would not have a noticeable impact on the climate. So, uh, you know, when you look at at what uh, the energy industry emits for CO2, as far as the CO2 in the whole world, um, it's not even going to make a difference. And so about the only thing I can conclude is that this is an effort to fulfill the president's promise that electric rates will necessarily skyrocket. Let me read. I actually have that. Uh, I actually have part of that quote in, in front of me. Uh, this is from President Barack Obama speaking in January of 2008. He says, so if somebody wants to build a coal-powered plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that greenhouse gas that's being emitted. That will also generate billions of dollars that we can invest in solar, wind, biodiesel, and other alternative energy approaches. So, 
it seems like from those comments from the president, the goal is we're going to hamstring fossil fuels, specifically coal in this instance, with regulations in order to create a more uh, a better market for green energy. I mean, is that is that is it fair to say that that's behind you know possibly the motive behind this regulatory agenda? It's pretty hard to to not listen to the president's promise and look at the EPA's actions and and not draw the line between the two. So how how you know how how likely I mean the, the EPA is taking public comment on this right now and uh and obviously you know they're visiting North Dakota and and the public service commission uh invited them here to speak at the symposium. How likely is this rule to to take effect? I, I don't know. You know I it's just very tough to predict what they're going to do. But one of the things that that was discussed and 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 really uh, made a, a very good point the other day when we when we had the symposium was the fact that even if they don't take an action, as long as they're holding this out there and not assuring that new construction now uh, will be at least grandfathered in when new rules come, uh, the the utility companies find themselves in uh, what somebody there uh, labeled a, a regulatory purgatory, where they can't make a move even though these rules aren't in existence, because who wants to spend a billion and a half or two billion or three billion dollars on a power plant and get it all done and find out that the next year it doesn't meet code and they have to shut it down? It would be foolish. So, so even without the rule, just by throwing it out there, uh, it is in effect effective, I guess. Because building a coal power, I mean, that's not something you just decide, you know, you, you throw out some plans and you get some contractors together and, and you throw up a coal plant uh, over the space of the summer. That takes a lot of invest, investment, uh, a lot of planning. And so as long as there's a possibility that a new plant would fall, I mean, can, can you build a plant? I mean, as long if this rule's hanging out there and you built a, a new plant, you know, this summer, saying that that was possible, would these rules, when they went into effect, apply to that plant? Yeah, the the rule, you know, the the rule that's out there now, where the comments are coming in, that's would be on new construction. But as I said, this summer they're intending to come out with another rule on existing plants. We don't know what that number is going to be. Uh, one of the numbers that's been thrown out is eleven hundred pounds of CO two per megawatt hour. And and that is something that um, no uh, traditional coal electric plant is is doing right now. Uh, they're uh, you know closer to the two thousand pounds per megawatt hour range. And so, uh, since it's an unknown, yeah, they do intend to to bring out a new rule on existing plants. So just hurrying and getting one done wouldn't wouldn't uh, help the companies any. What could this mean for utility rates in, in North Dakota? Obviously, we're a growing state. We just got census numbers. Uh, we're, we're one of the top places for people to move into the state. We're leading the nation in terms of population growth. Obviously, more people, more industry, more commerce in the state necessitates more electricity. I mean, we're economy. We're an economy that runs on electricity. You can't put up a store. You can't put up a warehouse. You can't do these things without electricity. Uh, so demand in North Dakota is going up. Um, what you know? What what does this do for our ability to meet that demand? If if we've got these regulations sort of hold you know hanging over the coal industry state, uh, which which produces mo- most of the power used in North Dakota. Well, you know, clearly we can see that we have a lot of need for more power in the state. They're, they're talking two to three thousand megawatts more power needed in in western North Dakota in the next few years, and there's nothing in the planning stages for new coal plants. Uh, so, so this has completely stifled that opportunity. Really, the only new uh, generation that's being proposed is wind. And um, we all know what can happen on a real calm day if it's 40 below or 110 above. Uh, oftentimes, that's the days when the wind isn't blowing. So, you know, I, I do think that the EPA, besides driving up costs, is certainly putting our electric system's reliability at risk here with the games they're playing. 
I, I, cause that's, I mean, that's a really good point. In North Dakota, electricity's not optional. I mean, if it's, if it's, you know, 20 below outside with 50 below wind chills, as we've seen recently, and your power goes off, that's a big problem for North Dakota. I, I talked about it the other day that um, when, when we look at these kinds of regulations, uh, price matters and reliability matters. When we talk about price, uh, we have state borders, we have national borders, but the reality is that the industry and the jobs that go with them can be moved somewhere else in the world, too. And so the price matters if we're going to keep industry and jobs here. Uh, our climate is harsh, not just North Dakota. I mean, look at New York City. They're, they're experiencing harsh climates uh, or harsh uh, conditions. And electricity is not just a convenience for us. When it's bad, people, pets, and livestock will die. Al on one, and, and Kevin on two. Point, and, and I really don't feel like the EPA is taking this as seriously as they ought to. We've got a couple of uh, callers. Al, welcome to the program. You're on with Public Service Commissioner Randy Christman. Yeah, good morning. Um, and Kevin's on, too. I'm 94 all the time. And how many billions of dollars is uh, uh, them stringing wire from Monticello back into North Dakota going to cost? There's towers going up every day over there. Yeah, I, you know, that that was something that was cited in before I came, so I, I don't know the dollar amount, but I think your point is that it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I guess I'm not sure what what you're asking. It's a, it's a large amount. It's important sure, for us to get I'm the energy sure out of North really Dakota important. to where the people are that are needing it. But I, I'm not really following the the rest of the question. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, two minutes. People are going to have to pay for it. We're going to have to pay for it initially. But if we've already got the coal in North Dakota that we can produce it in North Dakota, why bring it hundreds of miles over? That's going to cost that much more when it's already here. Well, you know, a lot of the reason for more transmission is to move a lot of the power that's produced from the wind farms that have been built in North Dakota to uh, more population centers. We don't uh, tip. We don't use anywhere near all the power that's generated in North Dakota in the state. Uh, most of it is for export. Uh, but when I talked about the need for more power in western North Dakota, the reality is these plants were built and contracts were signed. That power is, is contracted to go to other places. We need more generation now, uh, n- new additional generation for ourselves here, too. Al, thanks yeah. for the, th- thanks for the Thank call. You. Al, appreciate it. Uh, we, uh, Kevin, hold on the line. Uh, uh, Randy, can you uh, hold through the break and we'll get one more call after the break? I'd love to. All right. Randy Crispin, Public Service Commissioner. Kevin, we'll get to your call right after this break. I'm Rob Port sitting in for Mike Kappel, 701-293-9000. If you'd like to join the program, 888-970-9329. Or if you want to tweet me a question, at Rob Port. We'll be right back. Don't go away. This is the Red River Valley's News and Information Station. 